How do and welcome back. Well, I'm trying the second version of my pills and a beer, and it's nice and nice cold. It's been in the fridge. I tried one of these last night. Very happy with it, but I thought I'd make a video and uh, and let you see what the changes were. Before I open it, let me talk about some of the changes I made. Uh, I really liked the last iteration uh, but what I've done is I've just upped the hops a little bit so it's still a 12 litre batch I got 20 bottles from this uh, and whereas before I used 150 grams of carapils I've now upped that to 200 I think that's a mistake and I think I should go back to the 150 but I'll talk about that when uh, I do the taste test I'm still using a uh, 1.5 kilograms of a light malt extract, but this time rather than using the Breeze Pilsner, I'm using extra light. If you remember, I found that lager, the first lager, to be really dark. It had like a copper amber colour to it. And uh, normally with lagers, Pilsners, you want that nice golden straw colour. Uh, I don't know if that was me because I'm I usually brew with dry malt extract maybe I scorched some of the uh, the liquid at the bottom of the kettle and it gave that coppery amber color I don't know but I swapped that out for extra light uh, Munton's extra light dry uh, liquid malt extract 1.5 kilograms I've upped the northern brewer for bittering to 38 grams 5.5 percent alpha acid and this is a 45 minute boil. I think the last one was 30 minutes. I've also upped the uh, hop stand. Uh, so whereas before it was 25 grams of SARS, I'm now up to 35 grams. And I've also added 100 grams of maltodextrin because it was in a book I read. <laughs> so it was just another idea. And I put in a 100 grams of maltodextrin. Uh, whereas before I used the... Uh, Mangrove Jacks MJ54 California Lager Common Yeast. Uh, I'm now using Lutra Kavaik just for this beer because I just wanted to get it quick and just do a, a taste test on my uh, new measurements. So I just wanted something that will get through the fermentation quickly and so I used Lutra Kavaik. It started off around about 10.52 gravity and it finished at 1008 so i'm looking at five and a half six percent beer uh it was brewed last monday night <laughs> and now it's sunday afternoon so there it is in the bottle it's been in the fridge i tried one of these last night and it does taste nice but i thought i'd uh fill myself tasting it so you can find out as well so let's crack it open. I've got a nice clean glass here and uh, we'll see what it's all about. Nice big hiss. I used a teaspoon of sugar, just normal table sugar, per 500ml bottle. So it's still going to be very cloudy, it's still going to be quite green because uh, it literally only finished uh, carbonating last night uh, I bottled on Thursday night so don't forget I brewed this Monday night I bottled it on Thursday night I kept it at a constant 32 degrees plus or minus half a degree and I was able to keep the bottles at the same temperature so within uh, 36 hours uh, the bottles were rock solid and uh, I left it a little bit longer but I did try one last night <laughs> when it was was ready so right well first of all the color is it looks dark I'm just looking now on the monitor that does look darker this looks like a nice golden little bit yellowy it's still very very hazy which is going to make it look darker it's a little bit of an orange hue which i do find with liquid malt extracts you don't get that with dry malt uh, but i think when that clears as i say this is a very green beer uh, 
I'm going to bring the bottles out here into the garage actually and leave them for a week and I think once all of this is cleared up that will be your typical lager colour. Uh, as I say, sorry on camera it, it's going to look darker. I think you can pick up that orangey hue though. Uh, but I think that's that's fixed it using extra light dry malt extract. Uh, that's going to look spot on like a lager when it's uh, conditioned and when all that haziness has dropped out. Okay, the aroma. It smells like a lager, what can you say? It is green, so I am picking up a little bit of uh, that liquid malt extract smell, but it's only faint. Nice grassy aroma. Maybe a little bit of lemon. And I like malt. Nice thin white frothy head which you expect on lagers. Right, let's take a taste. Cheers everyone. I mean that's a lager. Uh, well, more like a pilsner, to be honest. Very light malt up front. Uh, nice crispness to it. Obviously, this has been chilled, don't forget, for several hours in the fridge. I think that adds to it. Uh, but then it... Uh, because of those northern, that northern brewer, it goes to quite dry... Uh, halfway along and then you just end up with this nice grassy a uh, little bit of lemon bitterness at the back end it's not overly bitter though it's probably about 30 IBU uh, just a nice sharp bitterness just at the back end to finish things off with very nice I mean it's a lager at the end of the day Pilsner the reason why I thought I might just go back to 150 grams uh, with the carapils is because I think there's just a bit too much body in this it's almost bordering on like an ale body as opposed to a lager whereas before version 1 I thought it was fantastic I thought yeah it's a it's a lager it's very light bodied this has a little bit more body and maybe that 100 grams of maltodextrin can go as well because that will add to it uh, which all means I've got to make a third version <laughs> it's a great hobby isn't it this it's a great hobby uh, I think now the 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 measurements are right for the hops uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just rain back the carapils back to uh, 150, and uh, I'll probably dis discard the the maltodextrin altogether. Uh, but that's really nice. Another thing, this was a 45 minute boil. I think I'm going to go back to 30, and in fact, even for full batches, I'm thinking of just doing 30 minute boils now because I've been watching a video. Uh, by you know none other than uh, David Heath and if you don't know who David Heath is uh, I've, I've got his YouTube channel open on my uh, computer now this guy I believe is a qualified master brewer I've worked in the brewing profession as a master brewer but he left and now he works for a new Norwegian firm he lives in Norway and uh, he works for a homebrew retailer. Uh, what he doesn't know about brewing is not worth knowing about. And he's got a YouTube channel where he explains all about what malt is, all about what yeast is, etc, etc. All aimed at the home brewer. And there was a video he made that I found just a few weeks ago, but it was from eight months when he when he posted this 
eight months ago and basically he just says these one hour boils or the 90 minute boils they're not needed they're not needed and in fact in some industrial breweries they don't use them anymore uh, it's sort of like a legacy practice that's just been passed down and passed down you just brew for 60 minutes so you brew for 90 minutes and it actually it's not needed today uh, and he explains why and it's sort of like reminding me of uh, when I read the book about Kvike yeast about the uh, Norwegian farmhouse brewers and the writer of the book it's a very good book he actually was with them during the brew day and he asked them why are you doing this and why are you doing that and they didn't know it was just well that's what my father did and his father probably didn't know it's just what his father did and it's just been passed down and passed down a certain way of brewing and you just do it in this order and in this manner and they just um, moved away from that and they don't know why <laughs> they do it and he actually goes into a lot of detail on his video uh, it's called modern beer brewing boil times explained and how to convert older 90 60 minute recipes uh, he just basically says you just don't need to do one hour boils or 90 minute boils anymore today with the science and the technology and our understanding of the raw ingredients and the efficiencies that we've made in processing them the malting process and with hot growing the agriculture you just don't need to do 60 minutes and 90 minutes 30 minutes is all you need for a boil so I think I'm going to convert all my recipes to 30 minutes and you don't actually need to change your weights that much at all if you do uh, this well from the first Pilsner I brewed I found out that only eight I only needed an extra eight grams on top of the 25 grams of the northern brewer to get exactly the same IBUs for half the boil time so it's not like you've got to use double the amount it's not like that at all and he explains why fascinating video I'll put a link down below in the description so all of my brews now I think are gonna be 30 minute boils uh, which will save time on brew day that's good <laughs> But yeah, I'm really happy with this. Uh, I think I've got my hops, the, the weights right. Uh, and I think now using extra light, it's given me the color I want, the extra light liquid malt. I'm gonna brew this again, but I'm gonna brew it with dry malt. And that will be then the final version. I'm gonna kick out the maltodextrin and I'm going to lower the carapils back to the original 150 and I think then we have a commercial quality Pilsner style lager beer and also I'll be using the MJ56 although I've heard there's a new one coming to market called Novo Lager um, Homebrew Network on YouTube I think he's I think he's called Gash he was at some sort of uh, conference and uh, there was handing out samples of this Novo Lager and on his on his YouTube channel he actually prepared a lager using this yeast it's an actual lager yeast whereas MJ56 is a hybrid it it's basically like the Quebec of the lager world by by all understanding sorry it's fizzy uh, he was able to brew a lager at about I think he I think it was about 16 degrees it ripped through in about four days uh, like a, a five gallon batch and on his taste test he says it's absolutely identical to a lager absolute lager profile in the taste uh, you know when I said this is like bordering on a nail sort of thing this was just through and through a lager beer uh, fermented in four days at about 16 degrees I think it was 16 or 14 something like that 
so a higher temperature so I went to have a look online and unfortunately it seems to be it's only for professional brewers at the moment you can only buy them in 500 gram batches just a big tub probably of the dry yeast uh, and it's 140 quid <laughs> which actually doesn't work out bad uh, you've got a lot of brews uh, with 500 grams uh, and for a five gallon batch it probably works out if you think about 11 grams per batch at about three quid so it's cheap but I can't justify <laughs> 140 pounds for, uh, for 500 grams of uh, lager yeast so I think I'm going to give that a miss hopefully they may introduce it in nice convenient sachets 11 grams something like that for home brewers we'll have to wait and see but it's meant to be a really good alternative you know if you if you don't have uh, temperature controlled fridges and things like this it, it may be a good solution uh, and a competitor to uh, things like Lutra and uh, Mangrove Jack MJ56 but uh, it's not available at the moment unfortunately but I'm going to keep my eye on that and see if it see if it comes into the homebrew market be interesting if it did anyway that's it for for today i'm going to just enjoy drinking the rest of this and uh the big thaws arrived so all that snow is starting to melt finally and uh, it's meant to start warming up uh tomorrow's incredible it's going to be 13 degrees <laughs> it's been like zero for about a week 10 days but suddenly you're going to get a day that's 13 degrees which is very strange but very welcome so i'm going to move the beers out uh these these lager beers i'm going to move them out tonight and uh yeah i'll just let them sit in here for a week uh and then see see what it's like after that but i think once it starts to clear i think it's going to make a world of difference so thanks for watching it's been a pleasure and as always I'll see you again in the next video. Bye bye for now.